Hello everyone, I'm back with a new video about uh, using GPS with the ESP32. Recently I had to work with GPS in a kind of a big project, so I needed to make some modifications uh, for this driver and I thought maybe I'll open source a version of this uh, driver because I think what I did is interesting. It so before I walk you through the code, I have some some notes here that I want to walk through. Okay, so uh, the source code is in on github.com slash rad-hi, that's my profile, and then esp32 dash uh, underscore gps underscore a driver. Anyway, so the wiring for the GPS module, if you don't know what it is, and I'll hopefully remember to put a picture of this module on, on the video. So the wiring is uh, straightforward. It uses serial to communicate on a 9600 baud rate. If you don't know what serial is, uh, please go Google it or look up any other videos. It's, it's one of the basics of uh, serial communication, is one of the basics of Embedded, pro program, embedded programming and Arduino in general, so you'll find tons of videos and resources online about it. Uh, for serial communication or communication in general, we can use uh, hardware specific for that communication, like it's hardware that is made to, to maintain and do a serial communication or I2C communication or any uh, protocol. So. In the Arduino, for example, you, wherever you see the TX and RX pins, that's serial communication. On the Arduino Uno, we have a single ser uh, serial port. We call it a serial port. Hardware, um, I th uh, when, I'm, when I'm talking about uh, serial ports, I'm talking about hardware for now. On the ESP, we have three, three of these. So they are serial 0, serial 1, and serial 2. For me, I used serial 2. In this uh, specific example you don't have to but it is there uh, so serial 0 is on pins 3 and 1 anyway so serial 1 is on 16 and 17 and serial 2 on is on 26 and 27 so I'm using these two pins make sure if you change this to change the pins according accordingly and I'll show you where you can change these in the uh, code in the header file Anyway, I implemented as well a software serial communication and this is not recommended. Most of the time, this is not recommended. I only implemented this because in my case, I'm using the three hardware serial ports. So, and I need GPS, but software serial communication is not reliable and it's way slower than hardware. Uh, generally anything implemented, anything that could be done in hardware and is implemented in software will be slower. Uh, look up bit banging if you want to learn more about this or software implementation of hardware peripherals in general. Anyway, so as I said, you can choose any couple of pins for the software serial to make them uh, communicate via the serial protocol, but some pins are input only or output only, so make sure to uh, read through the datasheet of the ESP or any resources online and check the useful pins. Anyway, so for serial communication, we need the transmitter side to talk to the receiving end of the receiver side. And since this is a full duplex uh, communication, which means that the GPS could talk to the ESP and the ESP could talk back to the, G uh, to the GPS. So sometimes the, G the GPS is the talker and the ESP is, is the listener and vice versa. I mentioned full duplex thing. That means that uh, these, tra these transmissions in both uh, ways could be done simultaneously. So at the same time that the ESP is talking to the GPS, uh, the GPS could talk to the ESP since we have two separate lines. Anyway, so the transmitter of the ESP should be hooked to the receiver of the GPS. The transmitter of the GPS should be hooked to the receiver of the ESP. That's straightforward. The second thing that I want to talk about is the reading frequency. 
So I uh, experimented a little bit with this and I found out that uh, I could get up to 10 hertz, 10 reads like per second from the GPS. I would rather stick to five. The third thing that I want to talk about is the operation medium and this is very important because this cost me six days of debugging only to, f to find out and this is a lesson to learn is to always go for the data sheet. The first place you should uh, seek information about a product is the information that is provided by the people who made that product. And for sensors and generally the embedded world, you should read the data sheet. So GPS doesn't work indoor. Wherever there is a wall, uh, there, there is a roof uh, on top of the GPS, it won't pick the satellites, it won't connect to the satellites, and you won't have any data. So as I said, six days of going back and forth with this, only to find out that I just had to stick that GPS module from the window. Yeah. That sucked, and whenever someone talks to me about GPS, that's the first thing that, that I mention. I'll never forget that. Read the data sheet, please. And the weather could be a factor that would prohibit you from getting a fix when, like this, the fix is when the satellite, uh, when the GPS module is connected to more than, I'm not sure, but I think it's three satellites and that's when it could do its triangulation and give you its position in the world. The cold start is the first time you hook your, uh, you power your uh, GPS module and for that to get a, a fix in the optimal conditions it needs up to 15 minutes sometimes even 30 minutes so give it time it's okay throw, to, uh, throw it out of the window and pu give it power and let it find the where it is, let it update its internal information, and uh, give it time, just give it time, be patient with it. There's something called assisted GPS or AGPS, and that's when you have somewhere, somehow the your location. So even on a cold start, you can give that information to the GPS, you can provide it to it, and it will be easier for it to find uh, where it is in the world based on that information. First off, we have this preprocessor uh, directive. I think they are called directives. Anyway, so if uh, use software serial is defined, which is defined here. So if software serial is defined, your serial port will be a software serial port or an object, else your serial port will be a hardware serial. And as I said, hardware serials are serial, serial zero, or serial, serial one, and serial two. In this case, we're using two. Notice how I'm using the same notation. This is because I, the code isn't different, only the object is different. Like, whether you're using a hardware serial or a software serial, that's the only difference between using a hardware serial or a software serial, is the definition of the serial port. So after this line, everything is the same, whether you're using a hardware serial or a software serial port. Anyway, so if you want to use software serial, you keep this defined. Otherwise, if you want to use hardware serial, you just come at this. And something I didn't mention is my code is a wrapper on the Tiny GPS Plus library. I kind of created an API between Tiny GPS Plus and my code just to clear clean things up. So I have my serial port and I have my GPS object, which is a tiny GPS plus object. Be by the way, uh, this I'm using this preprocessor uh, macro because uh, it's not a macro directive. I don't want uh, software serial and hardware serial to coexist. I want only one of them to exist at a time. So by using this, I make sure that if software serial is defined, this is equivalent to, not that, this is equivalent to 
coming here and deleting all that. That's what the preprocessor is doing. And if you want to learn more about uh, preprocessing, this is a step that comes before compilation in C and C++ code. If you want to learn, uh, I recommend you learn more about preprocessor, about macros, about directives and all of that stuff. And if you want to learn more about C in general, I have uh, a, a GitHub repo that has very, very good documentation of the NCC uh, programming language book. And this is a function to interpret the, uh, the error message that is returned by the reading function. By the way, error in embedded, I used to have this confusion that error means something bad, but error is just a report. Sometimes your error could be good, like, anyway, look how small our setup st uh, step is. We are starting our serial zero port, this is the zeroth uh, hardware serial port. And then we're just doing the serial init GPS. We're calling this function with a reference to, to this GPS object, to the tiny GPS object, and to the serial port. All you need is to serial read. You pass it your uh, GPS object reference, your current location, your data containers like and if you don't want to read your your time let's say you pass null in here and it will not return your date time let's now talk about why that uh, free artos stuff and the task and the software timer so what i wanted is an asynchronous access to data what i mean by that is i didn't want to read the data every time uh, like, I didn't want to uh, enter a communication with the GPS module every time I needed data. So I created a software timer, I made it uh, wake up every 200 milliseconds. So I'm reading the GPS every, every 200 milliseconds. So each 200 milliseconds, the, uh, the software timer, timer will throw an interruption. And that interruption will call will call this function, which which is the GPS timer callback. What we'll do is we'll notify from an ISR the task, the uh, the the main task of the reading GPS. So if you don't have an idea what a task is and what RTOS is and all that stuff, RTOS stands for Real Time Operating System. And say we have. Each function has its own loop, let's say. So we have like four loops running in parallel, pseudo parallel. Like in the ESP, we can do uh, actual parallelism because we have dual cores. But sometimes even on a single core, we can do pseudo parallelism by switching between, like when, this, when a function is blocked, we can switch uh, to the other function to do some work. Then when that's blocked, we get back to the other function or n functions. We can have as many functions as we can afford or want or, or both. So, so we have this task, this GPS reading task that has a super loop. This is a loop that's a while true, that runs forever. And it, it waits for a notification of availability or of access to reading, let's say. So the software timer wakes up every 200 milliseconds. It notifies the, uh, notifies the GPS reading task that it's OK to read. So it was blocked here, doing nothing, just waiting for uh, the notification. Once the notification is received, what it will do, it will start the timer again. So starting the timer, uh, so each time the timer uh, hits 200 milliseconds, it will reset to zero and start uh, counting again. But if we start it here, say uh, between the calling of the, uh, of the interruption and uh, reaching this line, we lost, let's say, 10 milliseconds. I'm exaggerating here, but I am just want to I just want to explain my point. So let's say we lost 10 milliseconds and we only have 100, 190 milliseconds left to do the read. 
starting the timer uh, again will just reset it to zero. It won't throw an error or anything. So just I'm here, I'm making sure that I have 200 milliseconds to read my GPS. And that's it. So in the, in the main loop, we can do whatever we want and we will be sure that this, uh, whenever we call this uh, function, it will return to us the most recent uh, location that have been read, or not even location, the most recent data that was available uh, in the GPS uh, module, without us having to read it every time uh, we, we want it, and we can do other things in our program. So the modifications that you will have to do are the pins for the uh, software serial. Here I'm using the same pins because I have the same wiring I, and I don't want to keep changing the wiring every time I want to test whether it's software serial or hardware serial. So I'm using the same pins, but these could be any two pins for the hardware serial. These correspond to the serial two port. So if you change the port, you will have to change these. Otherwise, keep them the same. And by the way, uh, I think most of the pins on the ESP32 are multiplexed, so you could even use pins that aren't the default for the serial port for the hardware serial port. So the hardware serial pins could be multiplexed to any two pins on the ESP32. So yeah, so theoretically you can change either these or these. Just make sure that your TX is wired to your RX and your RX is wired to your TX. This is the baud rate. You can change this. This is the baud rate of the uh, GPS module. You will have to maintain that for you to get valid data from it. This is the reading frequency. If you, let's say, if you set it to 100, you will have 10 hertz. You will read the GPS 10, uh, 10 times a second. I'm reading it only five times a second because as I said, it's application dependent and my application doesn't require all that reading. Otherwise, that's all. You'll have only to change this and you will have GPS data from your ESP32 running on the first core, the core one of the uh, ESP32 and you will have time to do whatever you want in your uh, loop or any other tasks. You're, if you're doing, uh, if you're running Artos yourself, you will have time to do whatever you want with your task. Anyway, uh, github.com slash rad dash hi slash esp32 G, uh, uh, underscore gps underscore driver for the code and if you have any suggestions, comments, contributions, leave them uh, down below in the comment section. I have stuff to post. I have stuff to make videos about. I don't have stuff to or, uh, ready to post. So hopefully you'll see me back soon. Otherwise, keep safe, keep on learning, 